Good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay. And if you are watching for the very first time, if you can type a number one in the comments. Great morning, great morning. So good to see you all as you're tuning in. Go ahead and say hello and you all know what to do. Let's go ahead and begin to share out the broadcast as you're jumping on. Good morning, Faith. Good morning, Evangelist Rosa. Great morning, everybody. Let me go ahead and get this shared out. Good morning, good morning. So good to see you all. Good morning, Dorita. If you don't mind sharing this in our group for us, for some reason I'm not able to pull up, pull up the group name. I don't know why Facebook does that every now and then. So if you don't mind, that would be awesome. Good morning, Paula. Good morning. So you all know what to do. Let's go ahead and type in the comments. It's a great day to be alive. God did it again. God did it again. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So good to see you all. Let me go ahead and um, try to see if this will let me share this over to my ministry page. Good morning. Go ahead and type in God did it again. Great morning, Katrina. Good morning. Good morning, Burita. So good to see you. I am going to send your package off today, Burita. Good morning, BFF Ricky. Good morning. And I need to meet you today to give you your package, Ricky. Good morning. All right. Let me go ahead and... um get this shared out over onto my other page and we will get going good morning everybody yes my hands are blessed hang on just a second let me go ahead and um get this done all right we are good yes my hands are blessed if you have not already make sure you've grabbed your blessed oil and go ahead and type in the comments my hands are blessed good morning angela so good to see you my hands are blessed everything that i touch is blessed everything that i touch prospers everything i touch multiplies amen everything i touch turns to gold let's say that one more time everything i touch turns to gold these blessed hands will be <clears throat> these blessed hands will lay hands on the sick they will be healed and they will recover in jesus name and somebody say <laughs> amen so as you share out the broadcast go ahead and type in hashtag shared and what i would love for you to do is tag at least one or two people that you want to join us to listen in at least to the one year bible my goal is to get as many people right in the whole entire world listening to the one year bible even if they're not on at 4 30 um they can catch the replay so go ahead and tag somebody and get them to join in so i am so excited about how many people you all you all yes how many you all tag and then they come back and they messaged me i got my one-year bible it is something about seeing those pictures of everybody's one-year bible or any other book that i recommend that makes me super excited so um thank you all so much and go ahead and type in the comments god did it again listen it doesn't matter what you are going through right now it is a great day to be alive so someone type that in the comments it's a great day to be alive it really is a great day to be alive listen I don't know about you but I'm so thankful and so grateful good morning Marion that God has allowed us to see another day and he has given us another chance to get it right um, that's definitely not a small thing or anything we should take for granted so um, make sure that you take the time to grab your water. <clears throat> Excuse me. Make sure you've, uh, I might need a new, another bottle. Make sure you've grabbed your vitamins, your journals, your pens. Go ahead and just grab everything that you need and we will jump in in just a moment. All right. So um, go ahead and share what time did you go to bed last night? What time did you, that's right, sharing is caring. You are so right about that. Uh, what time did you go to bed last night? What time did you wake up this morning? Um, I went to bed at about 10. I got up at 3 and I feel really good today. I feel really rested. Um, it's been a lot going on over these past 8 or 9 days, but I feel really rested today. Praise the Lord. All right, so... Um, let's go ahead and jump in. What are we doing? What do we do now? 
if you are on the broadcast live, right, or if you're catching the replay, that means that you were on the wake up list and that's not a small thing. So good morning, Leslie. I'm so excited you ordered your vitamins yesterday. Um, that's not a small thing. So we're going to take a moment to thank the Father. But before we do that, if you don't mind just taking a moment, good morning, everybody, and typing in the comments where you're tuning in from. Um, I'm kind of working on something and I like gathering, you know, the areas where everyone is tuning in from. So if you don't mind sharing that, that would be amazing. And now we are going to go ahead and um, just thank the Father. All right. And so my question to you today is what if you woke up today with only what you thanked God for yesterday? What if you woke up today with only what you thanked God for yesterday. So with that being said, somebody type in the comments, God, thank you for everything. Somebody type that in for me. God, thank you for everything. Let's just cover it all, right? So go ahead and begin to type in the comments uh, what you're thankful for. So <laughs> Father, we honor you. Fa good morning, Myra. So good to see you. Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. You are God and you are good in every way there is to be good. And we say thank you. Somebody type thank you in the comments. We thank you for being such a good, good father. You are far better to us than we deserve. And we just want to say thank you on this morning. We are not asking you for anything. We just want to say thank you. We want you to know that we appreciate you. Someone type in the comments, God, we appreciate you. Sometimes it's just nice to hear that. You know, it's great. It's awesome that we can go to him and ask him for all it is that we need. But it's also great to just say, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Even if you never do another thing for me, I just want to say thank you. Amen. So just go ahead and type in the comments what you're thankful for. We thank you, Father, for protecting us through the night from things that we have no idea that you protected us from. We thank you. We thank you for waking us up with a sound mind. We thank you for waking us up with a sound mind. We thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time with you. We thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time in your word. We thank you. We thank you for being our healer. We thank you for being our deliverer. We thank you for being our protector. We thank you, Father, for being all that we need. We thank you. Someone type in the comments, thank you. All right, and so while you all are doing that, I am going to share our opening verse for today. And our opening verse is coming from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. And good morning to those of you that I saw um, that was that just tuned in. If you can be so kind and go ahead and share the video, type in hashtag shared. And while you're sharing, go ahead and share, uh, tag at least one or two people that you want to join in and listen to the One Year Bible. My goal is to get as many people as we can. I'm not even putting a number on it because God can do whatever. He's just so amazing. He can do whatever he wants. But the only way to get that done is with your help. So I appreciate you all for tagging your friends, tagging your family. Um, and they have been buying their one year Bibles. Um, we've been doing the one year Bible giveaways. And so thank you all. All right. So Ephesians 613, if someone can type this in the comments, it says, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the devil, when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand again, that was Ephesians 613. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand. So what did we say? What do we do? We stand, right? We withstand and we stand again. We will continue to stand, right? Somebody type that in the comments. I will stand. And so I felt led today to, um, to read our um, devotional again from yesterday. And then we're just going to talk a little bit before we move into the second half of the broadcast. Um, so for those of you that may be tuning in for the first time, um, our devotionals come from the Father's Heart Ministry here on Facebook. Um, I've been following their ministry for maybe three years now, and we've been reading their daily devotionals for about almost two years now, waking early for his glory. I absolutely love their ministry. All right. So the father says today, I am sending reinforcements into your situation 
let's just pause and somebody say thank you. Somebody go ahead and type thank you in the comments right there. I am sending reinforcements into your situation. I am sending warring angels and ministering angels to support you on the front lines of the battle you are facing. As you pray and as you declare, know that the angels will listen to your words and they will align themselves in action with your faith-filled declarations as they go forth to crush the enemies. There will also be prayer partners and intercessors, intercessors connecting with you. They will come alongside, not with suspicion or false discernment, but will look at you through the filter of who I say you are and witness the anointing that I have placed on you for my glory and for your own benefits. Somebody go ahead and type thank you. The Father says you are a king and a priest. Yes, you. You are a king and a priest. You are a principality and a power. Satan is defeated. Somebody go ahead and type that in the comments again today. Satan is defeated. He is defeated. He is a defeated foe. And all his illegitimate authority is broken and restored through Christ to rightfulness upon my people. Even as Adam and Eve, when they were placed in the garden, so I place you in your life both to tend and to keep to guard with the sword of my word and the shield of faith against what the enemy is doing to rip you off. Somebody say, Satan is defeated. So let your mouth pray. Take the coals of your prayers and offer them as incense before my throne, and I will receive them as a sweet smelling aroma. I will ratify your petitions, declarations, and decrees in the heavens, and they will be brought to pass upon the earth, and they will be brought to pass upon the earth, and shift will come. Shift will come. The heavens will open and things will look very different in your circumstances than they have in times past. Good morning, Delane. So good to see you. Good morning, India. Good morning. It's so good to see all of you. And with that being said, I want you all to be encouraged. The shift is coming and things are about to look different than they ever have in times past. So be encouraged. All right, so remember our opening verse for today was Ephesians um, 6.13. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, after you have done everything to stand. And so today, I know that many of us know this, but it's great to be reminded so I'm just going to go over some of the names of Satan that will help to expose his enemies. And then we're just going to go to what the word says about Satan's devices. So this is not necessarily me uh, uh, teaching. This is really just me reading the, what the word says concerning this. And I have a document with all of these scripture references. And I want to send it to you all through email. So if you have not already subscribed um, to the Inner Circle mailing list, Make sure that after the broadcast, you click the caption and go ahead and add your email in the link. So that way you can get this document. It's about maybe four or five pages or something like that of um, scripture references that we should be reading every single day, reading out loud every single day. So if you are on a mailing list, I will send it to you. If you're not on a mailing list, get on the mailing list so I can send it to you. All right. And I will not do send the email until the evening. Because what I like to do is give everyone enough time to catch the replay, um, just so that way they can get the email too. All right, so um, I want to read, um, open up with Ephesians um, 6, 10 through 12. Someone type that in for me. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 12. And it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle, and I need you all to hear this, is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. And I thank God for this reminder here that we wrestle not, the struggle is not with 
flesh and blood. So a lot of times things will happen. A lot of times people will do things and we want to lash out, take action, but we need to stop and remember that this, this war right here, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. And I needed to even remind my own self of that. Keisha, what happened right here, what this person did to you in this situation, you're, you're not fighting against them. You're not fighting against flesh and blood. It's the spirit behind them. So we fight a whole different way, right? Than we would if we were, uh, well, see, I don't do this anymore. But if we were fighting people in, in the flesh, right, in the physical, we fight in a whole different way. Use a whole different set of weapons, right, when we're fighting people in the spirit. And so um, this is a great reminder that the struggle is not against flesh and blood. And some of us are busy fighting people. And we're wasting our time fighting people, fighting flesh, fighting, fighting blood. Is this helping anybody this morning? So just a few of the names of Satan. And why do we need to know the names? Because just knowing his names in itself will expose his schemes. Because the names are a dead giveaway, right? <laughs> his names are a dead giveaway. So if we know the names, it will auto we will automatically know the schemes. Knowing the names will expose his schemes. So the first name is Satan, which means adversary so go ahead and type that in the comments satan you know that's the first name we want to talk about and it means adversary and so i'm going to give you all two scripture references for this one are y'all still here y'all are real quiet this morning or y'all just listening are y'all just listening all right so satan means adversary job 1 6 through 7 says one day the angels came to present themselves before the lord and satan also came with them the lord said to satan where have you come from satan answered the lord from roaming throughout the earth going back and forth on it busy body busy body all right, the next scripture reference is 1 Thessalonians 2.18. 1 Thessalonians 2.18, it says, For we wanted to come to you, certainly I, Paul, did again and again, but Satan blocked our way. So the first name we need to know him as, it, our enemy as, is Satan, which means adversary. The second name we're going to talk about today is devil. All right. So our enemy is known as Satan and he is known as the devil. And I know many of you are probably listening like, I know, I know, I know, I know all this. It's great to just be reminded. So just hang in there. All right. So the second name, devil, okay, again, okay. And it means slanderer or false accuser, slanderer or false accuser slanderer or false accuser so what does this tell us he's a slanderer and he's a false accuser right and so first peter 5 8 if someone can type this in first peter 5 8 says be alert and of sober mind your enemy the devil all right prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour again he tells us what he's doing i've been roaming throughout the earth going back and forth on it back and forth back and forth i you know i roam around like a roaring lion seeking whom i can devour somebody go ahead and type in he's a busybody. let's tell him again go sit down somewhere <laughs> go sit down somewhere all right the third name we want to talk about today is angel of light someone make sure y'all are typing the names in the comments for me satan and devil all right the third one is angel of light angel of light second corinthians eleven fourteen. 14 uh, somebody laughing at me second corinthians eleven fourteen 14 says and no wonder for satan himself masquerades as an angel of light he masquerades as an angel of light all right Listen, just knowing his names exposes all of his schemes, right? Exposes all of his devices. Um, so number four, the fourth name, go ahead and type this in. The evil one, the evil one, which means absolute corruption, absolute corruption. Again, knowing his names exposes his schemes. That's why it's so important for us to know his names, to know the names. And we're not going over all of them, but I have about four I have about six, seven, or eight of them here. All right, the evil one, which means absolute corruption. First John five nineteen, um, angel of light, angel of light, angel of light. 
um, 1 John 5, 19, we know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. All right. So the fourth name, the evil one, this word right here lets us know he, listen, he is the evil one, right? So we know our enemy as Satan, which means adversary, the devil, which means slanderer or false accuser, angel of light, and the evil one, which means absolute corruption. All right. So the next name we're going to talk about today is the tempter. Someone type that in the comments, the tempter, which means to try or test one's faith, virtue, character by enticement to sin. So anything or anyone that comes to tempt us to do anything, we know what, who are they? The enemy, right? So again, just knowing his names exposes his schemes. This is letting us know that he is the tempter. He is the one behind all of the tempting us to do something that we know we have no business doing, right? Going against the word of God. First Thessalonians 3, 5 says, I was afraid that in some way, the tempter had tempted you and that our labors might have been in vain. All right. So he is also known as the tempter. He is also known as the prince of this world, the prince of this world. How do you know that? Where does it say that at in the Bible? Somebody say the Bible says the Bible says in John 12, 31, it says, now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out, will be driven out. So his names expose him. The names alone expose him and his schemes. The names alone expose him and his devices. The names alone expose him and his tactics. He is also known as the accuser. Someone go ahead and type that in the comments, the accuser. Again, I know we may know this, but it's great to be reminded, right? So I'm here to remind us all this morning, all right? And like I said yesterday, we need to spend some time talking about him. You know, we believe the lie long enough that we shouldn't give, you know, we shouldn't give the enemy time. Talking about the enemy is glorifying him. We need to spend all our time talking about God and not the enemy. Not so. I don't believe that lie anymore. We need to spend time talking about him. We need to study him just as he studies us, right? So that's why so many of us have been blindsided because we don't spend enough time getting to know him, getting to know his ways, his schemes, his tactics, his devices, his names. We don't spend enough time doing that so when something happens we're like whoa where'd that come from you know why is this happening you know because we don't spend enough time but somebody go ahead and type in the comments again i got time i know that's not proper english because it should be what i have time but we're gonna say i got time say somebody say i got time for it am i frozen ricky says i'm frozen but i look okay here on my um on my ipad Somebody let me know if I'm frozen. I don't know, Ricky. Um, maybe go out and come back in because I don't look frozen here. So I'm going to keep going. All right. So uh, did I already? Okay. The accuser. Someone type in the accuser. Revelation. Okay. I'm not frozen. Revelation 12, 10 says for the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down such a bitty busybody right he let us know in job 1 uh 7 that he's roaming throughout the earth going back and forth back and forth on it right he let us know in first peter 5 8 that all he's doing is roaming around like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour right the word let us know in revelation 12 10 that all he does day and night night and day day and night night and day right is accusing us listen he's a busybody we need to know these things we need to know these things all right and the last name and listen um th let me know jumping ahead of myself the last name all right thank you because I don't I don't look frozen over here see that's why I have this open over here so I can see what's going on right um, I was for a minute you went out and came back in all right so the father of lies the last name father of lies John 8, 44. See, like the devil is a liar today. He's not playing with this broadcast today, right? Um, John 8, 44 says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, 
for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. He couldn't tell the truth even if he tried. He is a liar who and the father of lies. All right. So those are the names. And again, you see clearly if we know the names, the names automatically expo ex exposes his schemes. So that's why it's so important for us to know his different names. So that's all I want to go over today. And so I want us all to meditate on Ephesians chapter 6 verse is 10 through 13. Someone type that in for me. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 13. Hold the line. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 13. All right. So that's that. And now I have, um, I'm not going to read all of these scripture references because it's a lot Let's see, one, two, four pages. Um, and I copied and pasted all of these into a document. And it's basically what the word says concerning Satan's devices. Is, is this all of them in the whole entire Bible? I don't know. I don't think so. But it's enough for us um, to use for right now. So, again, if you're not on the mailing list, um, get on the mailing list. Um, I will share the link um, to, for the mailing list in the caption of the video. Um, when we log off if for some reason when we log off, I don't do it right away Just go to the video from yesterday or any other video the link is there So um, you'll definitely always be able to find everything that you need somewhere on my page, right? Um, so and I'll send the this email out later on this evening to give everyone enough time to um, To uh, catch the replay and if they want to add their email addresses they can um, so what I'm going to do is how am I going to do this? I'll read. So I'll just pick a few of them. And I actually want to start. And I sh this one should have been first. I want to start with Genesis 3, 2 through 8. Someone type this in for me. Genesis 3, 2 through 8. Because this kind of really lets us know where it all began, right? This was his plan from the very beginning. Genesis 3, 2 through 8. Listen. He's been a busybody from the beginning, right? I don't think that's ever going to change. But that's all right. Because we're going to take some time studying him getting to know him, watching his every move, right? Um, Genesis 3, 2 through 8, it says, And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent, the serpent, the accuser, the father of lies, the angel of light, Satan, the devil, whatever we want to call him, right? Him. He said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw the and see, and as I always say, the problem is right here that she was engaging in conversation with the enemy, right? So, and that's something we will no longer do, right? So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave her husband with her and he ate then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked that lets us know shame stepped in right there and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering and they heard the sound of the lord god walking and there's something about that every time i read this like they heard the sound of him just walking in the garden in the cool of the day right they heard the sound of the lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves shame from the presence of the lord god among the trees of the garden so he was a liar from the very beginning. We already know he's the father of lies, right? There, there is no truth in him. So that's Genesis 3, um, 2 through 8. 2 Corinthians 2, 11 says, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. So we can say today, I decree and I declare that I will no longer be ignorant of Satan's devices. Right? Um, let, let me drop down to Ephesians 4, 22. It says that you put off concerning your former co conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according 
into the deceitful lust. Ephesians 4, 27, as we read yesterday, reminds us that we're not even supposed to give place to the devil. And you can, that's right there. And this is how you can uh, write your own declarations because with that right there, you can say, I decree and declare that I will no longer give place to the devil, right? Um, there's just so, as a matter of fact, that's our homework. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we're not going to just get the document that gives us the list of scripture references on Satan's devices. We're going to read them and right underneath it, there's lots of space. You can write out your own declarations and you can read your own declarations. So that's our assignment. So we're going to turn as many of these scripture references into declarations because speaking the word over ourselves, decreeing and declaring the word is so powerful. Our words shape and form our, wor our world, right? So let's do that. We're going to turn um, as many of these scripture references into declarations. If you are all for it, go ahead and type me in the comments. If you're all for doing that, go ahead and type me in the comments. There's more than enough room on here because um, the font is really big. So if you are all for it, go ahead and type, um, sorry, I'm turning off this, um, turning off uh, the noise that's going on over here. Um, 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. James 4, 7, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. All right, so I'm not going to read all of these. I'm going to um, send these in an email. And so when I send it in the email, if you're able to print it out, go ahead and print it out. If you're not able to print it out, um, you can pull it up, look at it, and go ahead and write the scripture references out, and then go ahead and write the declarations out right underneath it, however you want to do it. But definitely take some time to pick a few of these um, to turn them into declarations and speak it out loud every single day. All right, so that's it. Um, that's all that I have for today. I'm going to close out with our declarations. I have two declarations today, and then um, we will move into, I'm like, where's my Bible? It's underneath me. I was like, where's my one-year Bible? Right under all my papers. That's where it is. Um, so I'll read our two declarations, and then we will move into the second half of the broadcast. I decree and declare all schemes and snares against me will be revealed in Jesus' name. Hashtag waking early for his glory. If someone can type this in the comments for me, I decree and declare all schemes and snares against me will be revealed in Jesus name. I decree and declare that every move the enemy makes against me will be reversed with powerful breakthroughs in Jesus name. Hashtag waking early for his glory. Again, I decree and declare that every move the enemy makes against me will be reversed with powerful breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Hashtag waking early for his glory. All right, so those are our two declarations today. And I'll send um, the email with the scripture references later on this evening. And I think that's it. So we are going to move into the second half of the broadcast. So if you're new uh, to the broadcast, if this is your first time, Thank you for making it this far. We are about to um, listen to the One Year Bible, my favorite part of the broadcast. Um, yeah, I get to get out of the way. Look at this. We are at the end here. Do y'all see this? We are at the end. We are almost done. Another year of reading through the One Year Bible, you all. So we're about to do that now. So go ahead and grab everything that you need. Um, yes, Verita, go ahead and type in hashtag 20 minutes. All we're going to do is be on for about 20 minutes longer and then we'll be done. Um, so give me a second here. Let me just pause for a minute. Can I do that? Can I just pause and just be quiet for a second? Let me just do that. <laughs> Let me just pause for a minute. Let me just pause for a second. All right, somebody go ahead and type in audio.oneyearbible online for me. Audio.oneyearbible online for me. And I'm going to pull that up on my phone. And I'm just going to be quiet and listen to the word. How about that? <laughs> How about that? 
So today is Wednesday the 16th. Yes, thank you for the reminder. If you all go ahead and start sharing your takeaways, um, what is one thing that stood out to you, something you will do differently because of what you heard, go ahead and share that. And I'm going to go ahead and press play and get out of the way. All right, here we go. If the volume is okay, press 2. Our reading in the Old Testament today will be from the book of Isaiah. Um, Marion, there will be a link in the comments of this video after the broadcast for you to add your email address. Um, you'll just click on the link. It's the inner circle. And if you can add your name and your email address in the link. All right. Okay. Chapter 22, verse 1 through chapter 24, verse 23. Yes. I will Isaiah's take my vitamins. Isaiah's message probably of the Assyrian attack on Jerusalem. And one of the messages of the chapter is this. When a crisis occurs, different people respond in different ways. The prophet saw events from a spiritual viewpoint and was burdened. The city leaders depended on their defenses and did not call for fasting and prayer. The people feasted and expected the worst. They had no faith in God. They demonstrated no faith in God. Shebna used his office for personal gain. And the crisis if you brought him share, only shame. Share. In taking inventory of the city's resources, somebody uncovered his deceit and exposed him. So instead of enjoying retirement, security, and a fine burial, he experienced captivity, exile, and a lonely death. Well, the crisis brought out the best in Eliakim. He was a servant who was a father to the people, a person who could be trusted with authority. The keys is what that represents, authority. And a strong peg on which the nation could put their burdens. He is the kind of leader needed today. Lord, help us. And as we continue reading today, mm -hmm. in Isaiah chapter 23, we'll see that Tyre and Sidon were Phoenician cities that brought great wealth to the nation by shipping and trading. It seemed incredible that such a successful economy would be wiped out, but mm -hmm. it happened just as the prophet warned. Some of the people were stunned into silence, while others openly expressed their grief by wailing. It seems that people who rarely weep over anything else will weep when they have money problems. Assyria put Tyre and Sidon out of business for 70 years, yes, and then man. they were restored. God considered the business of Tyre and Sidon as nothing but fornication. They were harlots, promoting themselves and ready to sell themselves at the highest price. But some of their goods would be used to help rebuild the temple of the Lord. Yes, God does work in mysterious ways. Men may think they control the economy and what they do with their profits, but God makes the final decision. Man proposes, God disposes. And now let's read today in the New Testament. September 16th, Isaiah chapter 22, verse 1 through 24, verse 23. This message came to me, Isaiah, concerning Jerusalem. What is happening? Why is everyone running to the rooftops? The whole city is in a terrible uproar. What do I see in this reveling city? Bodies are lying everywhere, killed by famine and disease. All your leaders flee. They surrender without resistance. The people try to slip away, but they are captured too. Leave me alone to weep. Do not try to comfort me. Let me cry for my people as I watch them being destroyed. Oh, what a day of crushing trouble. What a day of confusion and terror the Lord, the Lord Almighty, has brought upon the Valley of Vision. The walls of Jerusalem have been broken, and the cries of death echo from the mountainsides. Elamites are the archers. Arameans drive the chariots. The men of Kir hold up the shields. They fill your beautiful valleys and crowd against your gates. Judah's defenses have been stripped away. You run to the armory for your weapons. You inspect the walls of Jerusalem to see what needs to be repaired. You store up water in the lower pool. 
You check the houses and tear some down to get stone to fix the walls. Between the city walls, you build a reservoir for water from the old pool. But all your feverish plans are to no avail because you never ask God for help. He is the one who planned this long ago. The Lord, the Lord Almighty, called you to weep and mourn. He told you to shave your heads in sorrow for your sins and to wear clothes of sackcloth to show your remorse. But instead, you dance and play. You slaughter sacrificial animals, feast on meat and drink wine. Let's eat, drink, and be merry, you say. What's the difference? For tomorrow we die. The Lord Almighty has revealed to me that this sin will never be forgiven you until the day you die. That is the judgment of the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Furthermore, the Lord, the Lord Almighty, told me to confront Shebna, the palace administrator, and to give him this message. Who do you think you are? building a beautiful tomb for yourself in the rock. For the Lord is about to seize you and hurl you away. He is going to send you into captivity, you strong man. He will crumple you into a ball and toss you away into a distant barren land. There you will die, and there your glorious chariots will remain, broken and useless. You are a disgrace to your master. Yes, I will drive you out of office, says the Lord. I will pull you down from your high position, and then I will call my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, to replace you. He will have your royal robes, your title, and your authority, and he will be a father to the people of Jerusalem and Judah. I will give him the key to the house of David, the highest position in the royal court. He will open doors, and no one will be able to shut them. He will close doors, and no one will be able to open them. Come on now. He will bring honor to his family name, for I will drive him firmly in place like a tent stake. He will be loaded down with responsibility, and he will bring honor to even the lowliest members of his family. The Lord Almighty says, when that time comes, I will pull out the stake that seemed so firm. It will come out and fall to the ground, everything it supports will fall with it. I, the Lord, have spoken. This message came to me concerning Tyre. Weep, O ships of Tarshish, returning home from distant lands. Weep for your harbor at Tyre, because it is gone. The rumors you heard in Cyprus are all true. Mourn in silence, you people of the coast, and you merchants of Sidon. Your traders crossed the sea, sailing over deep waters. They brought you grain from Egypt and harvests from along the Nile. You were the merchandise mart of the world. But now you are put to shame, city of Sidon, fortress on the sea. For the sea says, Now I am childless. I have no sons or daughters. When Egypt hears the news about Tyre, there will be great sorrow. Flee now to Tarshish. Wail, you people who live by the sea. How can this silent ruin be all that is left of your once joyous city? What a history was yours. Think of all the colonists you sent to distant lands. Who has brought this disaster on Tyre, empire builder and chief trader of the world? The Lord Almighty has done it. To destroy your pride and show his contempt for all human greatness. Come, Tarsius, sweep over your mother Tyre like the flooding Nile, for the city is defenseless. The Lord holds out his hand over the seas. He shakes the kingdoms of the earth. He has spoken out against Phoenicia and depleted its strength. He says, never again will you rejoice, O daughter of Sidon. Once you were a lovely city, but you will never again be strong. Even if you flee to Cyprus, you will find no rest. Look at the land of Babylonia. The people of that land are gone. The Assyrians have handed Babylon over to the wild beasts. They have built siege ramps against its walls, torn down its palaces, and turned it into a heap of rubble. Wail, O ships of Tarshish, for your home port is destroyed. For seventy years, the length of a king's life, Tyre will be forgotten. 
But then the city will come back to life and sing sweet songs like a prostitute. Long absent from her lovers, she will take a harp, walk the streets, and sing her songs so that she will again be remembered. Yes, after 70 years, the Lord will revive Tyre. But she will be no different than she was before. She will return again to all her evil ways around the world. But in the end, her businesses will give their profits to the Lord. Her wealth will not be hoarded, but will be used to provide good food and fine clothing for the Lord's priests. Look, the Lord is about to destroy the earth and make it a vast wasteland. See how he is scattering the people over the face of the earth. Priests and lay people, servants and masters, maids and mistresses, buyers and sellers, lenders and borrowers, bankers and debtors, none will be spared. The earth will be completely emptied and looted. The Lord has spoken. The earth dries up, the crops wither, the skies refuse to rain. The earth suffers for the sins of its people, for they have twisted the instructions of God, violated his laws, and broken his everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth and its people. They are left desolate, destroyed by fire. Few will be left alive. All the joys of life will be gone. The grape harvest will fail, and there will be no wine. The merrymakers will sigh and mourn. The clash of tambourines will be stilled. The happy cries of celebration will be heard no more. The melodious chords of the harp will be silent. Gone are the joys of wine and song. Strong drink now turns bitter in the mouth. The city writhes in chaos. And every home is locked to keep out looters. Mobs gather in the streets, crying out for wine. Joy has reached its lowest ebb. Gladness has been banished from the land. The city is left in ruins, with its gates battered down. Throughout the earth, the story is the same. Like the stray olives left on the tree, or the few grapes left on the vine after harvest, only a remnant is left. But all who are left will shout and sing for joy. Those in the West will praise the Lord's majesty. In Eastern lands, give glory to the Lord. In the coastlands of the sea, praise the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. Listen to them as they sing to the Lord from the ends of the earth. Hear them singing praises to the righteous one. But my heart is heavy with grief. I am discouraged. For evil still prevails, and treachery is everywhere. Terror and traps and snares will be your lot, you people of the earth. Those who flee in terror will fall into a trap, and those who escape the trap will step into a snare. Destruction falls on you from the heavens. The world is shaken beneath you. The earth has broken down and has utterly collapsed. Everything is lost, abandoned, and confused. The earth staggers like a drunkard. It trembles like a tent in a storm. It falls and will not rise again, for its sins are very great. In that day, the Lord will punish the fallen angels in the heavens and the proud rulers of the nations on earth. They will be rounded up and put in prison until they are tried and condemned. Then the Lord Almighty will mount his throne on Mount Zion. He will rule gloriously in Jerusalem in the sight of all the leaders of his people. There will be such glory that the brightness of the sun and moon will seem to fade away. All right, we're moving into the New Testament. Now's a great time to share if you haven't shared. September 16th. Our reading in the New Galatians. Testament today will be from the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 17. And we'll go through chapter 3, verse 9. We'll read about examination in chapter 3. It does us good to examine ourselves to make sure our spiritual experience is valid. Do you have the Spirit living within? If you began in the Spirit, which, by the way, is the only way to begin, 
Are you now trying to continue in the power of the flesh? We can get off track if our communication with the Lord is not uh, continued each day. Like Abraham, were you saved by faith? And are you now, like Abraham, walking by faith? And now let's begin today's reading in the New Testament. September 16th, Galatians chapter 2, verse 17, through chapter 3, verse 9. But what if we, Paul and other believers, seek to be made right with God through faith in Christ, and then find out that we are still sinners? Has Christ led us into sin? Of course not. Rather, I make myself guilty. If I rebuild the old system, I already tore down. For when I tried to keep the law, I realized I could never earn God's approval. So I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ. I myself no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Amen. So I live my life in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I am not one of those who treats the grace of God as meaningless. Mm. For if we could be saved by keeping the law, then there was no need for Christ to die. Oh, foolish Galatians, what magician has cast an evil spell on you? For you used to see the meaning of Jesus Christ's death as clearly as though I had shown you a signboard with a picture of Christ dying on the cross. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by keeping the law? Of course not. For the Holy Spirit came upon you only after you believed the message you heard about Christ. Have you lost your senses? After starting your Christian lives in the Spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? Come on. You have suffered so much for the good news. Surely it was not in vain, was it? Are you now going to just throw it all away? I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law of Moses? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Christ. In the same way, Abraham believed God. So God declared him righteous because of his faith. The real children of Abraham, then, are all those who put their faith in God. What's more, the scriptures looked forward to this time when God would accept the Gentiles, too, on the basis of their faith. God promised this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, all nations will be blessed through you. And so it is. All who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. Somebody type in the comments. Thank you. Psalm 60, verses 1 through 12. David and Joab were leading the armies of Israel against two enemies in the north when a third enemy invaded in the south. When you get one problem solved, another one comes along. It seemed that God had abandoned his people and that the end was near. But David did not run away. Instead, he boldly lifted God's banner of truth and listened for God's word of assurance. The Lord is our banner, and we can trust him to give the victory. His banner over us is love. Do you know the name David means beloved? God's people are beloved not in themselves, but in Jesus Christ, the beloved one. In the midst of life's battles, remember that God loves you. God assured David that he was in control of the nations. So David and Joab stepped out by faith and won both battles. When you feel broken, you are still his beloved one. Amen. If you believe, you can boldly win the battle. So go ahead, march out under God's banner of truth and love. Psalm 60, verses 1 through 12. For the choir director, a psalm of David, useful for teaching, regarding the time David fought Aram Naharaim and Aram Zobah, and Joab returned and killed 12,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. To be sung to the tune, Lily of the Testimony, you have rejected us, O God, and broken our defenses. 
You have been angry with us. Now, restore us to your favor. You have shaken our land and split it open. See all the cracks before it completely collapses. You have been very hard on us, making us drink wine that sent us reeling. But you have raised a banner for those who honor you, a rallying point in the face of attack. Use your strong right arm to save us and rescue your beloved people. God has promised this by his holiness. I will divide up Shechem with joy. I will measure out the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim will produce my warriors, and Judah will produce my kings. Moab will become my lowly servant, and Edom will be my slave. I will shout in triumph over the Philistines. But who will bring me into the fortified city? Who will bring me victory over Edom? Have you rejected us, O God? Will you no longer march with our armies? Oh, please help us against our enemies, for all human help is useless. With God's help, we will do mighty things, for he will trample down our foes. Somebody say amen. Proverbs 23, verses 15 and 16. My child, how I will rejoice if you become wise. Yes, my heart will thrill when you speak what is right and just. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, and let everybody type in the comments, amen. All right, so happy birthday, Sean Wilson. Everybody say happy birthday. Um, so that's it. We are done for the day. Remember, I am going to share the link to the email list in the caption of the video. If you want the email that has all the scripture references um, that we read today or most of them, go ahead and drop your email address in um, that link. Please don't put it in the comments because I used to be able to go through the comments and gather all the email addresses, but I just it's just too many now. So if you can drop your email address in the link, if you already subscribed, it won't let you subscribe again. Um, so if, if for some reason it does not accept your email, that means you're already subscribed and maybe you just forgot. So, um, and I'll send the email later on this evening. That'll give everyone enough time that catches the replay that can add their email address if they want it. So you all have an awesome day. I'm going to go and do my stuff and get my day started. So um, yeah, that's it. You all have an amazing day. Bye, and don't forget to share the video. And you still have time to tag a friend that can catch the replay um, to listen to this, all right? Bye, y'all.